Today we're working on one of my favorite daily drivers. She's a 2008 Toyota FJ Cruiser that I bought in 2010 with about 44,000 miles on her. Now anybody with a Toyota can tell you that's still fairly brand new. She's now got about 120,000 miles on her, which means she's also got a blown axle seal. So this is fairly typical with high mileage Toyota trucks, Tundras, Tacomas, and FJs. Nothing to worry about. Today we're going to pull the axle and as soon as I gather all my tools together, we'll let you know how that's done. Before I do that, I also want to tell you that you're going to want a bunch of room to be able to pull the axle off if you're doing this yourself. You'll notice I've got a nice big space, maybe about four or five feet, because the last thing you want is to be all set, ready to pull the axle, and you have no room because you're just going to put everything back together again or put a dolly under and try to slide it all around. So don't do that. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, step number one, we're going to pull the tire off. So obviously this is easier if you have an impact wrench. So go ahead and make sure it's set to reverse and start pulling off the lug nuts. And I always like to do it in a pattern rather than go all around in a circle, just from my tech technology days, tech days. Go ahead and pull the tire off. Good thing I work out. There we go. And these are actually 32 inch tire, 33 inch tires. So they're a little bit bigger than your normal FJ Cruiser tire. I'm going to go ahead and set it to the side. And when we come back, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, now we're ready to go. So before we take off this wheel spacer, I wanted to let you guys know that we're really only videotaping about half of this install. So I wanted to really concentrate on the cleaner part. On this side, the axle seal hasn't been blown. It actually happened on the other side, but this way it gives you an idea of what to expect, what steps to take, and I don't know, I think it looks a little bit better. So at any rate, now we're ready to take off the spider tracks wheel spacer. When we first put this on, we put on a whole bunch of Loctite. And so it's going to be a little bit noisy, a little bit kind of dirty, but we're going to take care of business. Here we go. this caliper and as soon as I grab a tool for that we'll be right back okay guys before we pull off the caliper we're going to have to go ahead and disconnect the brake line now this is because we'll also be removing the backing plate along with the axle so before you begin doing that get a rag in place because the brake line will ooze a little bit and also get a little cap so you can seal off the line as soon as it starts to ooze okay Let's do this. Yeah, and it's already starting to ooze. with the 
brake fluid. It's a little bit slippery. Come on, Cap. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. So we've got the cap on the brake line. I've got brake oil on my fingers, so I'm going to go wash my hands. And after that, I'll show you the next steps. Okay, now that I've put a cap on the male side of the brake line, it's always a good idea after you do that to, you know, wipe up any spills you might have done and wash your hands. And go ahead and also put a cap on the female end of the brake line too, just to prevent any further contamination. So now our next steps before we can pull the caliper completely free is to remove the clip right here so that we can pull the brake line free. And this, it's a fairly, eh, it, it takes some pressure to get this clip off. So I'm going to show you how to do it. What you're going to do is center your screwdriver right here in the middle and twist so it lifts up on one side and then move it down just a little bit so that this part is still in the middle and lift up on the other side. Oops. And it's a little bit hard to do it when I'm not right in front of it. There we go. So you can see it's lifting up. And after that, you could put it right in the middle. Oops. And lift up. always give it a good working and hey whatever works for you got it off <laughs> okay so here's that clip so we'll put that aside we don't lose it and now we can just slide this right out and woohoo the brake line is free I'm gonna gather up my tools to pull off the caliper and when we come back that's exactly what we're gonna do now we're ready to take the caliper off completely to do that we have to take off two 17 millimeter bolts the first one is right here and the second one is right here. So let's go ahead and do that. There's the first one. Oops. And the second one. Perfect. Okay, so we'll set those bolts aside, set your tool aside, and go ahead and release the caliper. We'll have to get the brake line underneath. Perfect! Okay, this is off. We're going to go ahead and change camera angles and gather up some more tools, and when we come back, we'll take care of that parking brake. Now we can go ahead and remove the rotor. Before you try this, always make sure the parking brake is off, otherwise the rotor isn't going anywhere. Okay, so we've already made sure about that. Now what we're going to go ahead is just kind of wiggle it and it should be easy to remove. There we go. And don't be timid, you gotta give it a good shake. So it is off, we've set it aside. When we come back, we'll go ahead and remove the parking brake cable and we'll also remove the ABS sensor. Okay, now that the caliper is off, the next step is to press this spring back right here and release the adjuster. And we're gonna be pushing that back as well. And just keep going until it stops. Okay, and it stopped. Now we're gonna get some more tools and we'll be right back. Okay, now we're ready to take off the pad retainers. So to do this, your first step is to rotate the axle flange until you can see the retainer pin through the access hole. After this, grab yourself a pair of needle nose pliers or a pair of hemostats like I'm using here. Go ahead and place the tips into the notches on either side of the pin and kind of spread it apart a little bit. After this, you can go ahead and press forward and rotate 90 degrees. 
You may have to have your hand on the pin on the other side to release it, but I'm going to try. Oh, yeah, then I got it. And so now you can see that the retainer pin has been released. So now we're going to choose a different camera angle and continue working. And now with your needle nose pliers or hemostat, you can reach in through the side and just kind of grab the spring and cup and release both of them. The cup and, uh, <laughs> and the spring. And I've got kind of a, ah, and it fell. I see it. And I'm just yanking parts at this point. <laughs> Shit. There it is. It's at the bottom. There we go. I've got my spring and I've got my cup. So I am good to go. Now we're going to go ahead, find some more tools, find a better camera angle and be right back. So using the same process as before, I went ahead and removed the other retainer. Now we're going to go ahead and release the shoe spring. Before we begin, please, please, please use a pair of safety glasses because you don't want to lose an eyeball over a brake job. Okay, so putting those on, grab your pry bar and go ahead and insert it under the spring here and pull up. And it should release. Ooh! Just like that. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and remove these pieces right here. There we go. And like you can see, it is definitely spring loaded. Lots of dust and dirt. Don't want to get that stuff in your eye. And boom. So now that we have the brakes disassembled, we're going to go ahead and remove the parking brake cable from the lever. So grab the lever with one hand right here pull back on the cable and it should slip right off. Put that aside. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the cable from the backing plate. To do this, there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and one right here. This may be a little bit hard to get off and you may have to feed the cable through the backing plate to fully get it off. Just warning you now. Try not to put it in the dirt and the other bolt. Okay. Oh, oop, lost my head. There we go. That should be. Oh yeah. There you go. It's always a little awkward working in tight spaces here. And now this should be able to feed it through the backing plate. And I don't want to completely bend the crap out of it. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. So if you get kind of a downward angle, it seems to help. There we go. and it is loose. It's out. Okay, we're going to grab some more tools and when we come back we'll show you what we're going to do next. And now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the ABS sensor. Please be gentle with this. The sensor is very delicate and you're going to want it out of harm's way. So before you do anything, get a shop rag, white towel, one of these guys, and just kind of place it over the side so you can lay the sensor down once you have it out. So to remove it, there's just a single 10 millimeter bolt, and that is right over here. Go. 
finger tight there. Okay, so we've got out our bolt, and now you're just going to be very gentle, and you don't want to bang that end into anything. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up in our little towel, as so, oops, and place it to the side. Okay, now we're ready to move on. I'll be right back with possibly a different camera angle and we shall proceed. Well, now we're ready to remove the last four nuts that are holding the axle into place. The nuts are right here, two, three, and it's a little hard to see, but it's a little up. It's not quite parallel with this nut right here. Also, before we remove the nuts, be sure to place a drain pan underneath because chances are the axle is going to leak. Okay, let's go ahead and break our nuts free. One maybe. Oh yeah. A little bit looser there. Okay. Whew. Oh, okay. We've got all four nuts off. We're gonna get a different camera angle, and when we come back, we'll be ready to pull the axle out. Stay tuned. Okay. Now we're ready to pull out the axle. Before we begin. Be sure to take the time and move your brake line in front of the bracket here because you really don't want it to be damaged. Okay, now that I've done that, we're going to pull the axle straight out. You may have to jiggle a little bit, but be sure don't break the seal. Okay. to be which is why we have plenty of room and now we're gonna go ahead and stand it up Whew. and now we've got the axle out well we've got half of the axle out now I'm gonna have to go ahead and repeat the process on the other side and we'll be listing the steps after I'm done congratulations you're halfway there <laughs> 